hard to describe something I'll never miss. April has gone and passed, and so have many albums. April was an interesting month for sure, and had some of the most eclectic releases of the year so far. I have a feeling that this might be one of the more eclectic bunches that I have found thus far. So I hope you enjoy what I found in my digging. Also, wish me a happy birthday because my birthday was in April. Wish, give, give me birthday wishes right now. Let's open with this century's most anticipated album, Panchico's debut, Failed at Maths, 23 years in the making. I'm sure by now most of you know the story behind legendary British band Panchico, and if you don't, then in short, some random guy on 4chan found a CD for Panchico's debut EP, Death Metal, in a charity shop, and asked if anyone knew who this band were. This innocent question kickstarted a four-year search trying to figure out who Panchico were, all culminating in the eventual finding of the band, an official remaster and release of not just Death Metal, but a previously unreleased EP entitled Kicking Cars. If you want a more in-depth explanation of everything, I recommend checking out Wang's video on the matter, I'll link it below and in a card next, just above here, if I remember to do that. But enough of the past, we're here for the present, and that present is Panchico's album Failed at Maths. Does it live up to the hype? I mean, yeah it does. Kind of. This album manages to showcase the obvious evolution the band would have gone through as they got older, but still manages to maintain what made people love the original EP so much. Tracks like the title track and Portraits feature a heavy layer of trip-hop and shoegaze that makes the former feel inviting and comforting, and the latter distant and foggy, both of which were feelings present on the original rotted version of Death Metal. Owen stated himself that he actually prefers the rotted versions of the songs over the remastered versions, hence why they were kept on the re-releases. I think it's evident he wanted to incorporate some of that sound into this record too, especially in tracks like Portraits. We also have songs like Until I Know and Gweneveris, which feel like classic Panchico and just classic post brit pop in general. Until I Know reminding me heavily of acts such as the Cranberries and Gwen Everest just being shoegaze bliss. My biggest gripe with this record is its length. It doesn't give itself time or space to really stretch its wings, and while it has some amazing ideas at play, a lot of them don't get to blossom apart from a couple. A song I would love to hear more of is The Closer, Rocking with Keith. And even though it is the longest track of the album, it still feels like more could be done with it. I would love to hear a full record of that post-rock trip-hop sound. I just want to rock with Keith some more, bro. Is that too much to ask? 8 out of 10. Some of the key tracks worth checking out here are the title track, Failed at Maths, Portraits, Until I Know, and Rocking with Keith. I listened to Billy Wood's previous record, Aethiopes, which released last year, and I really enjoyed it. It showcased how talented of a producer and rapper Woods was, so seeing him release another album so soon was a bit exciting. I hadn't listened to any of Kenny Seagal's work prior to this, but I knew of him and some of his work, especially the work he did alongside Woods in the past. The first word I think of when I think of this album is hypnotic. The production, the flow, the lyrics, it's all phenomenal, and it feels so smooth and natural. It's as if Woods and Seagal breathe this stuff. Songs like Babylon by Bus and FaceTime especially are such stunners that I cannot get enough of. The writing on Babylon by Buzz is impeccable, along with Woods and the feature Shrapnel's flow. FaceTime features Samuel T. Herring with some amazing vocals on the chorus that complement the song beautifully. Everything about this album feels so tight and purposeful, I can't get enough of it. 8 out of 10. With such a big track list, it can be a bit tricky to pick the major highlights, but I feel the key tracks here are Babylon by Buzz and FaceTime. I never thought I would enjoy a Scream album this much. At least. Again. Now, this isn't my first little dive into the Screamo scene, as I have listened to I wrote Hikers About Cannibalism in Your Yearbook. I said that way too quickly, doesn't matter. You know which album it is, I put a picture on the screen. And I really enjoyed it. Since then, though, I haven't really had much interest in the genre, I suppose. I've listened to Sunbather by Death Heaven, but I don't know if you'd count that as Screamo. Either way, I was seeing a lot of praise for this album, and someone recommended it to me for this video, so I thought, what better the time than now? My god, is this thing brilliant? It's incredibly short at only 24 minutes, 
This video might even be longer than it, who knows. But within that small time frame, it really spreads its wings and gives everything that it's got. Some of these songs are genuinely incredible as they are filled with such passion and talent. The vocals are superb, the guitar work is phenomenal, and it all comes together to make something I never thought I would love, but I do. I really do. Big, big recommend, even if you aren't a fan of the genre or are new to the genre. This is a gateway drug for sure. 8 out of 10. This album is best listened to in full, especially as it is so short, but it obviously has better tracks than others. The key tracks here, if I had to pick some out, would be South by South Isolation and Pines on the Hill with guests. Walking into a pub and sitting down with a drink. You can hear some local band playing on the stage in the back. You don't pay them much mind to begin with, but as time goes on, you feel yourself becoming more and more drawn to their oddly comforting sound. They're not exactly good, but there's something about them that feels like home. That's how I would describe Tracy Denham by Bar Italia. This is a really nice album and something I can just turn off to for 43 minutes. Oddly enough, it actually reminds me a little of Stereolab if they went in a more slackery slash lo-fi direction, which definitely adds to that comforting feeling. I can see myself listening to this album a lot more as the summer months come to an end, maybe by the fire. 8 out of 10. Check out the tracks, Mrs. Morality and Changer. I have to admit, I've never been a huge fan of soft rock. I can't really pinpoint what it is, but it's just never really resonated with me. I went into this with expectations that weren't high or low. I wasn't really sure what to expect, actually, but from the first seven songs, I got what I was sort of expecting. Which that definitely wasn't bad, and I could enjoy and sway along to, but nothing substantial. That was until track 8, What Happens to a Heart, where everything changed. There was just something so grand about the entire track that just made it stick with me for the rest of the album's runtime. The second half was definitely superior to the first half, as it still had some small surprises to offer me after this, like the tracks Born To Be Lonely and Ghost Run Free, which was even more stunning soft rock, made me really appreciate everything I'd heard prior. It was enough to make me change my thoughts on the album as a whole, and on subsequent listens, I started to enjoy the entire record more and more. While it definitely isn't perfect, I can see myself returning to this a lot to just chill. It's a really, really nice record. 8 out of 10. All the tracks I already talked about basically are key tracks, but it's worth reiterating. What Happens to a Heart, Born to be Lonely, and Ghost Run Free are all key tracks. I didn't listen to any of Parks' music before this, but I knew the name, so that's something at least. I went into this completely blind, with practically zero expectations, but I was still quite pleasantly surprised. I wouldn't call any of this groundbreaking or truly spectacular, but it is some really, really nice R&B-infused bedroom pop, with some very nice lyrics about loving the people around you and loving yourself the same amount. It's a sort of record that just lets you unwind for 40 minutes, and that's a really nice thing sometimes. 8 out of 10. The tracks that really stood out as recommendations were Blades, Weightless, Pegasus, and Room Red Wings. I wasn't sure if I was into this album when I first listened to it. I'm still not entirely sure how I feel about it currently. What I can say is this album has some really nice ideas, but nothing is fully fledged enough to feel like much of anything. The best thing I can compare this to is Pure Comedy by Father John Misty, which overall is just a better version of this album. It's got some nice tracks and some fun sounds, and I like how theatrical it gets at times, but I can't help but feel that the vocalist gets either too lost in it or doesn't try hard enough. There isn't really a middle ground, and it is sort of a letdown. It isn't a bad album, but it doesn't stand out as much as I think it would like to. 6 out of 10, Pushing a 7. The key tracks are the more theatrical ones, like The Movie and Fear, Life in a Dozen Years. I absolutely love me a good indie rock record. So hearing this for the first time after being recommended it by a friend, I fell in love with it. This album really does feel like a dog biting and barking at you, baring its teeth as they drip saliva onto the floor, staring you down hungry. The album opens with a song that's in your face from the get-go, with its dirty reverb guitar hits falling into the snarled chorus. Salivate, the second track, continues this trend with a chorus that really does feel like a crack-tooth smile. Not every song here wants to eat you though, don't worry. Songs like Center and Leash are karma, sonically at least, as they give off heavy synth-pop energy, especially with Foot's more monotonous vocals. We also have much grander tracks too, as we reach the end of the record, with tracks like Daddy's Car, the title track, and the Closer, which are all major highlights. I just adore the way she sings the refrain on Daddy's Car as it slowly builds up around the chorus on the title track is sung. Right 
I could go on forever about the little things I love about this album, but I don't want to spend all day on this record. 8 out of 10. Again, pretty much all of the aforementioned tracks are the key tracks, but I'll narrow it down a little. Center, Leash, Daddy's Car, and the title track, I Am The Dog. The last Midwife album I listened to was Forever, and it's pretty safe to say I didn't enjoy it very much. Johnston's heaven metal style wore off quite quickly when most of the album was ambient and just quite boring. I was scared that this record would share the same fate, but gladly, it didn't for the most part. The album begins quite strongly with Miss America and Hounds of Heaven and features that prominent heaven metal style that I adore, when it's done right at least. Miss America is slow and hushed while Hounds of Heaven is much more in your face with its reverb drenched guitars. As the album progresses we get NMP which feels like a longer version of Miss America, which isn't unwelcome, and then Plague X which is a pretty unnoteworthy song. We then get to the closer which is unfortunately the weakest track on here. It's an ambient drone piece that spans 12 minutes and presumably the entire of side B of the vinyl record. It feels anticlimactic and tacky. At best, it's nice to unwind to, but it just doesn't fit with the rest of the album, especially due to how short the rest of it is in comparison. Without this track, the album would only be 20 minutes long. If this were an EP with just the first four tracks, and this would probably get a much higher score than a 7 out of 10. Key tracks are Miss America and Hounds of Heaven. You may remember the name Elijah Nutson from the February video as he was featured alongside Panda P. Rosa with their collaborative album I Watched 10 Years of Pacific Weather. I really enjoyed that album and it seems people noticed as I was recommended this album for this month's video. I was intrigued to hear what his solo stuff sounded like as I had already done a little exploring to P. Rosa's solo stuff. I would describe this album less as a piece of music to consume and more like a painting to look at, to absorb. This isn't an album that you would loop nor is it really background noise. I feel as if this record is something that you take time to look at and take in as you listen to the soundscape and world it builds. And that's fascinating. What kind of emotion do you feel when you stare at a painting of a cold, desolate winter scene? There's a man lying in the snow, but the artist has made him deliberately obscured so you can't tell if he's alive or dead. This album feels like that painting, but as we listen we hear the beginning and end of his short-lived story. A story where he travels to the cold arctic but succumbs to its harsh and unforgiving nature. He loses his mind before he eventually gives in and lets the cold consume him. It's painless after that. 7 out of 10. This one is more difficult to pinpoint quote unquote key tracks, as like I said, it's more of a genuine experience than something to actually listen to and quote unquote enjoy. It's best to just listen to the entire thing. It isn't that long. And of course, we have plenty of singles and EPs to get through as well. A lot of interesting singles were released this month, and even a good couple of EPs too. So, let's dive right into them. I'm a bit shocked to say this, but the newest Lovejoy EP is actually really really good. It seems Wilbur listened and has stopped using trumpets in every single fucking song he creates, even when they just aren't needed. Wake Up and It's Over is a really solid post-punk revival EP, featuring six tracks ranging from stellar to still pretty good. Even the lowest points of this EP equate to the highest points of their previous two. I can easily look past their previous two EPs as just growing or developmental pains if this is the new standard for Lovejoy projects. Just please release an album already, oh my fucking god. 8 out of 10. An artist I hadn't heard of until now, but I really dig her style. Dev Lemon's debut EP, Delusional, is short and sweet and really fun. I don't think I really have too much to say apart from that this thing is fun and features some really good hyper poppy and glitchy production. It's merely an alt pop EP, but there are some really great elements in certain songs, like the bedroom pop influence in Nightstand, or the heavy bass in Dizzy Vision, or the heavy electric guitar in The Closer, Think About It, which sounds like an emo pop song straight from the noughties. 9 out of 10. Another recommendation from Twitter, and another recommendation that I will pass on to you. Visual Snow Asterisk by Crimson is a really solid glitch pop Midwestern emo inspired EP with some neat ideas. It's fun and there are some really strong moments tucked away here, like on Transmission Flux, Static, or through Visual Snow. I'm not saying the asterisk at the end of each song title. If you're craving some glitchy emo hyper pop, then check this shit out. 7 out of 10. Just something really chill and nice. Short and sweet. An EP that is basically a short album in length, that is incredibly, incredibly reminiscent of Stereolab, all the way down to the Frenchness. It's relaxing, and front to back, just a really nice listen. I highly recommend this. 8 out of 10. And onto the singles, gotta do it like me. Underscores return with a new single and new album announcement, Wallsocket. This is the lead single for that album, presumably, and she just cannot miss. It's a four and a half minute banger that combines hyperpop elements with indie tronica and noise pop to create one of the catchiest songs I've heard all year. It's clear that April is having a lot of fun creating her music and that is incredibly infectious.
This sounds like the shoe gauge of the 90s and 80s. Cocteau Twins and Slow Dive. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely enveloping. And I cannot wait to hear more. If you want some classic class shoe gaze, then Deary is the act to watch. Listen to Beauty in All Blue Satin, please. Another track given to me by my partner. This was less of a recommendation and more of just a song to listen to. Those were my opinions on it, and my opinion is, this isn't a bad song, but it's definitely too simplistic to be anything more than fine. The message is sweet, but that's all I really have to say about it. It's just fine. I really like the build-up this song has. It's a sweet singer-songwriter track, and on its own, that would be great, but it incorporates this slow build-up right from the beginning as Peters repeats the main motive of the song, seemingly about a breakup that happened titularly, is that a word? Two weeks ago. It's a really sweet song that actually makes me intrigued about our upcoming record. So fuck you, Winter. Lanterns on the Lake's final single for the upcoming record is a real doozy. In a sense, it's two songs combined into one, and it's done quite well. The first half is a classic indie rock track with some jangle pop and shoegaze elements filled in, which fills me with just energy and joy. The second half then, which begins as the song practically ends, is this reprieve of sorts, which is purely piano and raw vocals, and it's incredibly pretty. I love how unfiltered the vocals are. It's as if she's in the room with you. Bent Knee are not a band I had heard of before now, but this was a single recommended to me on Twitter, so I, of course, checked it out. I am so glad I did, as this is gorgeous. I saw a comment on RYM say that the latter half of the song sounds like Yellow by Coldplay, and that's actually a surprisingly good comparison. The way this song builds from a soft, folky singer-songwriter track to an all-out shoegazy dream pop track is really satisfying, and with the lyrics alongside, it feels pretty and hopeful. I should definitely check out more of their stuff. I wasn't sure if I was going to like this at first, but as the song went on, I really started to get into it. I've never been the biggest heavy metal fan, but I always seem to enjoy it whenever King Gizzard do it, even if people call it not true metal. I don't, I don't care. It slaps either way, and I love it. This is definitely up there with some of their best metal songs, and I adore the vocals throughout and the chugging riffs. Especially given the psychedelic output we got last year, this is a breath of fresh air and leaves me really excited. Every single single for this album has been phenomenal in their own wacky, weird ways. With each new song, I didn't think they could get quirkier and odder, but they just, they just can't get weirder than this. Right? The Blades is an utterly insane song that shows Squid at their most experimental yet, with a six and a half minute song that goes through three or four different stages. It opens with some kind of glitchy Kid A-esque synths before the crouch rock guitars kick in and anxiety inducing riffs begin to take over. Not dissimilar to the previous single. It's as the song progresses and things become more and more warped that it becomes just utterly engrossing as the song explodes with the four and a half minute mark and then just completely kills itself as Ollie ominously sings us out with what I can only describe as a sinister folky track. I cannot be more excited for this album. Blur Return. Again. This is technically their second comeback, isn't it? Either way, this comeback seems so much more promising than their previous. Their big comeback single, The Narcissist, is pure blur in every way and I love it. It feels like a combination between The Great Escape and Thirteen, which are my favourite albums from their two eras, Britpop and post-Britpop. Blur are back, and The Ballad of Darren is going to be a really good album, I can tell already. I've never listened to George Clanton before, but I wish I had because oh my god no one told me that he would make some of the best music I had ever heard. Justify Your Life is his newest single and just from my first listen I was instantly in love. His voice, his production, his lyrics, it's all so fucking layered, amazing, gorgeous, lush, so many words. <sighs> Breathe. This is one of the best singles I've heard in a while, alongside his other single I've Been Young, which is also absolutely phenomenal. I first saw this song performed live when I saw Ugly open for BCNR. I was stunned almost immediately. The acapella in the first couple of minutes is absolutely gorgeous, and at first I thought that's all the song was going to be. But then suddenly some guitars came in, and I was even more enamoured, entranced even. This song is an entire journey, and throughout its seven and a half minute runtime, not once did I ever want it to stop. It also weirdly reminds me of Animal Collective, but I think that might just be me. Swans drop another single for their upcoming behemoth, The Beggar, and while I did like it, I don't think it really even holds a candle to the lead single, Paradise's Mind. But that's okay, this is a gothic rock banger, and sometimes, that's just all you need. It's very reminiscent of older Swans, so it is cool to see the band going back to their roots pre-2010s. An absolutely gorgeous track, filled with pure melancholy and sadness, as Marshall sings into the void the lines, I'm so disappointed in you, and 
keep running out of space for your mistakes. It's a simple but incredibly effective track that leaves me very, very excited for Space Heavy. All of these singles have been stellar. And with that, we end the video. This one was a longer one I know. I had a lot of things to talk about, but if you made it this far, then I'm glad. This is the part where I go off script and ramble, as you can tell. May was a big month, surprisingly, because at first I didn't actually have any albums to put on this list, or hardly any, so I asked people. And I got a lot of suggestions. So I hope you enjoyed this video and this new sort of style of adding key tracks and such and stuff like that. I'm trying to constantly evolve things as I go along, so, you know, keep things fresh, whatnot. You can subscribe, like the video, check out all the reviews in the description below, because I should have reviewed all the albums at least, and I think the EPs, maybe, maybe not. And also donate to my Kofi if you wish, you don't have to, but it is obviously appreciated, because copyright, blah blah blah, I talk about this in every video. Either way, hope you enjoyed, good morning, good evening, good, I, I missed the afternoon, doesn't matter, if it's the afternoon for you, ah, uh, shit, I guess, not anymore, S subscribe, 